Jen Psaki is back and she's dropping sake bombs again. But this time, she's dropping them on Joe Biden and the Democrats. She warns that both crime and the geriatric in chief just aren't doing Democrats any favors. Oh, don't worry, she hasn't actually gone Republican. But all of that and more on this September 27th edition of The Breakdown. Here's my question of the day for you. What is the most important issue that you care about for the midterm elections? Please tell me your thoughts in the comments section below. We'll be taking a look at them, and I hope you'll respond right away. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel below and click that notification bell. Leave a like. You know why? That way YouTube is more likely to show this video to Democrats. They'll love it. You know they will. Well, we've got quite a few clips to get to today that we'll offer some commentary on. The first one is uh, Corrine Jean-Pierre at the White House podium. She's asked a question about whether Americans ought to feel safe. Here's her answer. Should everyday Americans who are not in the public eye feel safe? So I'll, I'll say this. Um, that same story also uh, stated that the crime is complicated and multifaceted. Uh, look, this is a president uh, who has secured historic funding uh, to make sure that uh, law enforcement has what it needs, uh, especially, and he was able to do this uh, in the face of opposition from Republicans. During a time uh, where, uh, where he inherited a rising crime rate from the previous administration, the president put forth the American Rescue Plan. Of course, it's always somehow, somehow, Donald Trump's fault, the Republicans' fault. It's not the defund the police idiocy that her party has put forward. It's never the, uh, you know, no cash bail and let violent criminals out, even before the paperwork is done on the person who has been brutally and viciously attacked. That person's still in the hospital. But the criminal, the person who did it, they're back out on the streets doing it again. I'm sure she doesn't think that has anything to do with it. It doesn't have anything to do with the fact that there's a double standard of judicial system in this country. Nope, she says it's complicated. Not really, Corrine. It's not complicated at all. You just have to wake up and start doing common sense things. Well, our next clip, this is um, Jen Psaki. She's back. She's got her own show on MSNBC. And I tell you, after watching Corrine Jean-Pierre for a while, I know it pains me to say this, but I'm, I'm kind of missing Jen Psaki. Uh, she told a lot of big ones and stuff, but you know, by golly, she did it with some level of competence and even her snark had some charm to it. She's back now and this time she's saying that Democrats may be in trouble. Let's watch. Jen Psaki says that crime is a huge vulnerability for Democrats. Why would she say that? So, you know, um, again, I can't do electoral politics from here, as you know. Uh, but I, I kind of, I don't agree with your characterization of what she actually said. Uh, if it is a referendum on the president, they will lose, and they know that. They also know that crime is a huge vulnerability for Democrats. I would say one of the biggest vulnerabilities. You know, you just have to give her some credit for being way more honest as a TV commentator than she ever was as a White House press secretary. And quite frankly, I understand that because her job at the White House was to always defend the White House. That was her only client. As a commentator, she has a little freedom. She can say what she really thinks. She's not on the taxpayer payroll. She's not being paid by Joe Biden to say things that honestly to many of us never made sense. And I kind of appreciated that she was pretty honest in that one. One of the reasons that Democrats are in big trouble this fall is because Americans do not feel safe. And why should they? Especially in cities run by Democrats. New Orleans, the most crime-ridden city in the country, the murder capital of America. They haven't had a Republican mayor since 1872. I didn't misspeak. 1872. Well, one of the other issues that is uh, continuing to happen is drugs coming across the border. For those who think that the border is only about just letting good, decent people come across, raise their families, and come to work in America, I wish that were all it was, but it isn't. It's human trafficking. Worst of all, it is the drug fentanyl made in China, delivered across the border, and it kills over 100,000 Americans every single year. Not in overdoses, but in one-time doses most of the time where somebody thinks they're just having a moment of recreation and they never wake up. Here's just a little truth about that issue. Rainbow fentanyl. These brightly colored pills and powders look very similar to candy 
even sidewalk chalk, but to be clear, they're dangerous. They contain the highly addictive, highly powerful drug fentanyl. Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid. It is 50 times more potent than heroin, 100 times more potent than morphine, and just two milligrams of the substance is considered to be a lethal dose. So that's why, you know, brightly colored fentanyl in this form is, again, getting some attention. And that's what's really happening at the border. And it's not just the fact that these drugs and human trafficking come across the border. It's the fact that many of those people who do risk their lives to get across because they are desperate for a new life. They end up dead because they are trafficked or sometimes they're put in the back of a hot truck and left there for hours and they suffocate in a, an excruciating death. On the Texas border, here's what the people working at the morgue have to say. Another day at the Webb County Medical Examiner's Office in Laredo, Texas. The small morgue, now one of the busiest along the southern border, as nearly every day the team wheels in another migrant body, adding to the more than 300 they've already processed so far this year. It is a crisis. I've labeled it. There you go. We're in the middle of a crisis. It's kind of nice and refreshing to see somebody say it is a crisis. Of course, she's one of the people processing over 300 bodies of migrants who have died trying to get across the border. Well, idiocy is not limited to the border. This administration has appointed a number of people in positions who obviously have no idea what they're doing. Jennifer Granholm was once the governor of Michigan. She is now the Department of uh, Energy secretary. And it's just hard to believe that she's just so giddy about the fact that we're paying such high prices for fuel because she says this is a wonderful opportunity for transition. So we ought to be celebrating. Actually, the transition is really a transformation, a transformational opportunity. America seizing the opportunity to build this whole new industrial sector that will help the world decarbonize. Oh, that's what it's all about, to decarbonize. We knew there was something that this was all about. And all those families who can barely put food on their table, they just can't wait to go out and go without groceries for two or three months. Maybe they'll buy an electric car. Whereas if they live in California, they can't plug it in because they don't have enough energy out there. Thank you, Energy Secretary, for your sympathy and understanding of the plight of the typical American family. And if you don't know what sarcasm is, I've just engineered a little piece of it. Well, finally today, uh, the stock market is down. It's down substantially. It's uh, now in a true bear market. Mm, $7.6 trillion, it has fallen. Now, lest you think that, well, the stock market is for rich people. No, it's not. Are you a retired teacher, retired policeman, fireman? Do you have a retirement account somewhere that someone is managing for you? Well, I don't know if you realize this, but the stock market's uh, collapse it's a gut punch to you. It is a gut punch to your retirement fund. Maybe we'll recover, but not as long as the people in power right now stay there. And it's why the midterm elections become all the more important. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the notification bell below. Be sure to leave a like on the video and share your answers in the comments to the question of the day. Be sure to tune in to the Live with Mike live stream this Friday. And if you want more of my news analysis and commentary, well, you can sign up for my newsletter at MikeHuckabee.com. It's totally free. That's going to do it for this edition of The Breakdown. I'm Mike Huckabee.